Andy, how are you? Hello, I'm on the Conscious Podcast. This is so exciting, Carlo. This is, and this is my, because of the isolation and, and quarantining uh, purposes right now that we have to do in this current circumstance, this is my first online interview. So uh, welcome, congratulations. It's an honor to, to have you on here. Thank you. I'm in your bedroom, which is about as intimate as we're ever going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, behind me is my homeschooling setup, my homework, my uh, gym, my kitchen. It's my everything. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, this is as intimate. I'm going to get into your place as well. We did, we did plan this and we're like, Hey, what if, what if I came over and we're 1.5 meters apart? And I'm like, look, yeah. And at that time it was, a, there was rules stage changing one. every day. What was that? We were on phase one, stage one lockdown at the time. Yep. <laughs> and now it's just escalated. So it's escalated to this. Yeah. <laughs> to to us now recording f live from my bed on my bed. I'm sitting yeah, on my yeah. bed. In bed with Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Conscious chats with Carlo in in bed. <laughs> So for the listeners and the audience that don't know who you are, there's a lot of juicy things that I'd love to talk about. Can you, so firstly, you are, and I'll, I'll try and get all of this out because you do so many different things. You right. are an expert on connection and wellness. Yes. Helping people to find love and to be well at the same time. You're a certified wellness coach. You're a dating expert. Yes. Unfortunately, after six years of research, I'm now an expert. <laughs> <laughs> You're a TV host and you feature on so many different programs. That's why like, looking at your Instagram is like, there's a new TV show like all the time. So it's really impressive and I can't wait to get stuck into everything. But for I've the listeners- I've done so much, haven't I? <laughs> you have. It's, it's super impressive. And I look really good for my age, Carlo. I'm turning 76 in July. No. Um, so wellness works. <laughs> What's no, I'm not. I'm going to be 47 in July. Wow! Congratulations. And what's the what's the secret pill? That's the question we're all. Oh, you'll have to read my books. All of my seven books. <laughs> sounds sounds like a plan. So, for the audience that don't, and the listeners, and the and the people viewing right now, the people that don't know much about you, um, can you give us a wrap up of your life from start to where you are now, and everything that you do? Where do you want me to begin, though? Like. <laughs> Whatever you feel is important for us to know. <laughs> you know, if you want to go right back to the very beginning, this is something that I haven't really shared a lot about, but I always draw back to it because it's such a beautiful story about are we just who we've always been and now an exaggerated version of that or do we really change? And when I was really, really young, I remember being just five and about to start grade one. Um, in the Gold Coast, by the way, I was, I was brought up on the Gold Coast and then travelled the world and then came to Melbourne and now I'm a Melbourne, you know, being here for so long. However, I do have fond memories of, um, you know, simple life and loving to read. And I remember that my father had this book and it was called Where Did I Come From? If anybody knows about this book, it was sitting on our shelf and um, it was a cartoon book and you know I had lots of books given to me as gifts and I really wanted to read this but dad used to always push it to the back and said no you're not allowed to read it until you're at least eight years old and um, you know little did I know that it was about birds and the bees and so I was like you know the more somebody says to me no you can't do it the more I just really wanted to but of course I do what I was told you always want to please an adult so I didn't touch the book and of course I was a good girl went to school and remember sitting in a circle type environment where you know in grade one you would get given a book and you could read sort of the pages of each book and you would go around the circle one person would read a page and when it got to me I think I must have been really fluent in my reading and I ended up, the teacher said to me, keep reading, Andy. So I remember reading in my best voice and just, you know, loving to read and tell stories. And then it got to the end of the book and I looked up and I remember realising, because I'm such an empath, I consciously realised that I felt sad because I watched everyone watch me and that they didn't get a turn. Mm -hmm. And then the teacher said to me, meet me in the office, in, in the principal's office rather, at the lunchtime. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am in so much trouble. What have I done wrong? And I remember going there, and this is going back to how old I actually am. There were about eight teachers around the principal's desk and she was sitting down. Geez, we were progressive back then. She, the principal, all the way back then, we had a female <laughs> principal. 
She was sitting down at the desk and my teacher pulled out an encyclopedia, telling, I know, from the top above her, slammed it down, opened it up to, you know, a random page and said, Andy, read. And I remember reading and sort of getting every 10th word wrong, but just kept going, you know. And one of the teachers said, oh, this is a setup. What a setup. What a waste of my time. And my teacher said, you turn to a random page then. So she flipped it open at another random page. And of course, I was very fluent again. And soon I realised that I was not in trouble, but I was actually a genius. And I could read before the age of five. So of course, I ran home, read where did I come from, knew how birds and bees were made and started charging everyone in my school 50 cents to listen to the story of where did I come from until <laughs> the teachers realised that, you know, um, the parents were telling them who's teaching the birds and the bees at the age of five. And of course, I got in trouble. And isn't that how all entrepreneurs begin? <laughs> they're like pushing beyond the norm and doing things that they're not allowed to do. And here we are today. I'm now a storyteller doing the same thing. And my seventh book is uh, about digital dating. So not quite of the birds and the bees, but it is called Hashtag Insta Lovers, which is all about modern dating and having respectful relations in the modern world <laughs> i love that so much and oh my you know, one thing about all of that is that you know the whole instagram world and online dating has obviously only been a boom in the past five ten years like i guess ten years ago it was like um man what was that website because they were all websites right mm. they weren't apps and that's the difference, you know, you're probably thinking of an RSVP website or something like that, Carlo. And so this is the thing is we all started getting so used to doing things on our phone and wanting connection that way, which is so ironic because my sixth book was called Wellness Loading, Disconnect to Reconnect. And that's actually a digital detox book. And I used to go to America backwards and forwards on my US press tours and talking to some of the top anchors and journalists in the world about how important it is to reconnect, even though we're in this heightened connection state with the World Wide Web but were we really connecting with each other with the community and so I really just wanted to highlight how it was so important to disconnect and consciously use that time when we're disconnecting to reconnect with ourselves with community and with the earth around us what could we do with that 15 minutes of time to consciously reconnect so that when we go back on an app instead of it being mindlessly scrolling and being selfless um, is what was more important than being selfish with selfie culture. Were we being more purposeful and conscious when we were coming back to the app after that disconnect time? And the time that we used to be on the app, how consciously connected were we? And therefore, how productive could we really be as a result of that digital detox, then coming back? With more conscious connection so that was the sixth book and then obviously dating apps started becoming really rife because we wanted swipe life to go even faster so it turned out that we were you know meeting irl then we went on to uh websites and then we went into swipe life with dating app culture and i wrote this book about i started researching about six or seven years ago when the app started becoming you know the norm and it was more the norm in america than it was actually in australia which is why I wanted to help Australia keep up to speed because there was still so much stigma around Tinder or meeting people online. Whereas in America, it was just like, what do you mean? This is normal. We like to do everything on our phone. So why wouldn't we just have, use this as another way? And so I wrote this book hoping would slow the F down, <laughs> you know, and really get to know each other because I think some of the... Um, psychology behind the physiology of the swipe life made you feel like oh next I don't really care about you but also when we matched it helped us to feel um, from a psychological perspective when you see the boom she's the one that we're getting that and I always say just because you've matched doesn't mean you're marrying slow it down and get to know someone first yeah. And that's the thing with, with any sort of connection, whether that's, you know, building a friendship or building a, a relationship, it's, it's depth over distance in, in a lot of cases. And it's one of my favorite songs as well by Ben Howard. Um, and yeah, for us, I don't know the song. 
go check it out. <laughs> um, it's a really slow, like uh, acoustic sort of song. But for me, like growing up in this culture of, of swiping, you know, I've been single for seven years. Yes, I've been dating. But in that time, you know, living in Europe, living in Melbourne, moving around a lot, it was, that's how I've met a lot of my friends and I've met a lot of amazing people and also had some incredible dates as well, which I'm still friends with to this day. Um, yeah, it's, it's such an interesting concept because again, I talk to like my sister who's been married for the past 10 years, never went on a dating site um, or a dating app. And they're like, oh, let me, let me use your phone and like swipe just so we can have a go. And like all my married friends, they're like, we don't have this. We want to, I want to know what it's like. And I'm like, well, it's, to me, it's always been, I'm so curious. And my reasoning always was not always did I have an intention of being on there. It was just, you know, why not? Um, then being more purposeful and knowing why, but also in that, like, these are people I would never normally meet. I, I live a quite a busy lifestyle where I'm at home a lot. I, I'm working, I'm editing podcasts and stuff like that. What for me, I was just so curious on who can I meet that I wouldn't walk past you in the normally, supermarket. You wouldn't normally get a chance to meet. And that is the thing with the World Wide Web is that it opened us up to meeting more people. And the same goes with dating. Now let's actually look at quarantine dating, which is what I'm calling it right now, <laughs> because people are still meeting, matching, meeting on a video or on an app. So they're meeting virtually and they're matching in love. And some people are telling me that they're actually finding themselves in relationships in this self-isolation phase, which actually has so much more meaning than you can ever imagine. And so I'm finding that this is a really interesting time. But having said that, I've been quarantining ever since we began because I would match with all of these people and talk to them and research. Um, but I never really met all of them. Some of them I did and we just became friends. But my opening lines would be, you know, I'm just a, you know, I'm an author and I'm researching. And so, oh, that's a great <laughs> line, they would say, you know, and um, I'm going to use that line. And I'd be like, no, honey, you really are just research to me um <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> but you know they were like well can we actually go on a date because i want to be in the book and then of course the book came out two years later and they all came out of the woodwork and they were kind of saying um am i in the book and i said we have to buy it to find out <laughs> and some of them actually were because i screenshot some of our conversations but i also hid their identity for respect yep. But it's really interesting to see how we've changed because when we were connecting on apps back then and before COVID happened, you know that whole be careful what you wish for because it comes true? Yep. We all colour, we just really secretly deep down inside asked for this. Because, not this tragedy, don't, don't get take this out of context, but what we really wanted was the deeper connection. So what we really wanted was for people to start listening to us more, to have deeper conversations, to um, think more consciously and kindly, um, to really care. And um, when we were on apps, in dating apps before COVID, I felt like there was still a little bit of um, ego, feeling lost, broken, all of those things. And there's nothing wrong with that because we all still deserve to have love and we do find love even whilst... Sorry, we, um, we do find love even whilst, you know, we're healing. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think this is an accelerated time to heal and to really connect now, which is beautiful what we can do with this time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, even so listening to that, seeing that how people were asking for more in depth, Okay, I've been on this stuff, uh, again, for years. So for me and listening to my friends that are girls, even guys, it's like a lot of people were jumping off those things because they're like, it's just, like you said, mindless scrolling. There's no depth. It was either people just want either the, the fling or they're, they're not responding on there. Like they weren't so active on it. Let's talk about that because yep. you're about connection. I'm about connection. And what I call this is a quick fix um, hook up, connection, whatever you want to call it. And so gone is the time of the quick fix connection where you feel like that is or that person is going to fill your void. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting choked up because to be honest with you, this actually means a lot to me because what is going on in the world right now? 
is actually indicative of to what's going on within ourselves because we are connected to the earth. And this is when I teach wellness on a holistic level is that we can't um, disconnect the fact that the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. And this is where, um, you know, we, this is a whole nother wellness talk that you and I could have, Carlo, but um, we always take a holistic approach at something and there's never one size fits all formula or approach that will fit or model that will fit anyone in healthcare. That's not how healthcare is practiced. Yep. So, um, you know, and so this is why um, wellness folk are now talking about, well, we don't want anything mandated because that's not how healthcare is practiced. We need to have a look at the overall picture. We need to look at someone's history, someone's genealogy, what's going on in their lifestyle and never have this one size fits all thing. So that's a whole nother subject for another time, which um, brings me back to the connectedness within each other. And again, what the world is calling for us to do now is to get connected. Because if we are looking again for a quick fix relationship during isolation, there's a danger in that as well. Because you're never going inward to do the deeper work so that when you do meet up with someone, that relationship is more about what can I contribute and who am I in this world and what do I offer and what legacy do I want to leave behind? All of those things are so much more attractive in a person and longer lasting and fulfilling in a connection or a relationship than how we look. And so gone are the days of this quick fix connection and this selfie culture and hello slow dating, which is quarantine dating and getting to know each other by understanding who we really are, but doing the deep work first, which is actually what my book is all about because it's all about having self-love. And I always say, love when you're ready, not when you're lonely. So that same principle applies right now in quarantine dating. Yeah, and I love that so much because it's all things that I, I really talk about, but in a different context. It's not so much okay. about finding love. It's about creating the life you want to create. It all starts within, then the external, not fix the external, get the partner, get the job, get the uh, business, then you'll feel whole. It's feeling whole, doing the inner work, and then the external, you can actually meet someone and, and you will attract people that are on that level too. And when you know for me, it was when I knew my values and when I knew what I wanted out of my life, what my, my um, day to day, what I, my dream life would look like, what my dream partner would not so much look like, but how, what things we would value together. You then know what to look for. And it's like with yeah. your values. If that's your, for me, how I teach this with your values is it's the framework for your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. If something doesn't align with my vision or, or if an opportunity comes up and it doesn't align with my vision or my values, I don't question it. It's as in, I, sorry, I do question it and I go, well, it doesn't align and doesn't fit into those values. So I won't do it. Similar to dating. I, I had a period where it was just whoever said, yes, let's, let's talk and possibly let's meet up. Um, there was, yeah, there was times where there was no want or search for connection now this is getting really personal but that's okay i'm willing to go there i know but, i'm bringing i i i know i'm very aware that i make people feel safe when they talk to me because i am a wellness coach so get personal and i mean share it with your audience because that's what they want yeah and, and this is the thing like i most of the people that i look up to it's you know the more willing we are to share the more i know a lot of people going through this and i knew for years that i was you know the the hookups the online dating all of that really was was for me, trying to, trying to justify a number that would then make me feel good. Like it wouldn't be the depth in something because I would run away from something that would meant commitment. Now there's obviously so many things beneath that, um, that I've done a lot of work on to get to, but in that time it was, the connection was almost disgenuine. Okay. It was to get something. It was for an end result. It wasn't based on connection. Whereas um, two, three years ago, it really switched for me where it was like, well, this isn't working. It's not filling a void that you think it's going to feel that the men, you know, are, are looking for out there and no, you know, judgments on people that are looking for fun. But for me, it was, I actually, what I value in my life is connection, whether that's with friends, whether that's dating, whether that's with family, one thing that you said before was that in quarantine that what it's 
enabling us to do is like with my family. So I live six hours from my family. I just moved two months ago. What it's enabling me to do is not get that everyday fix of, of seeing them and talking yeah. to them. But when we do say, so even like us right now, I can, yeah. I can look at your photos every day on Instagram, but when we actually get on the phone, it's like, I'm here, I'm present yeah. and I want to know about you. And that's exactly. where I'm seeing the shift into my friends that are, that are going on virtual dates. Yeah. Um, you know, me right now, I'm, I'm seeing someone very early stages. Um, yes, we're in quarantine. I get it. But it happened just before that. Um, and for, it all started online and then it moved to a Zoom call. And then from there, I was like, okay, sweet. Like, are you, you're safe? I'm safe. Do you, are you prepared to meet up? So, so yeah. if you have, and, and this is the thing is you, if you have begun a sort of a casual relationship a couple of weeks ago or, you know, just before lockdown happened, now is the time to ask for exclusivity. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that we need to be making very clear because I'm all about being safe as well, especially when you share your sacred space with someone. Actually, I want to draw attention to that topic because I am a health coach and every aspect of health to me is so important. And I actually, this was really funny arriving to my door because I don't know what was funnier, the box being left and then the, the courier sort of stepping back or the fact that the box had this written all over it. Can you see that? Yeah, it's the, the moment's condoms. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't, the box wasn't this big. The box was like that big and just, ha and he probably thought, why does she need that many? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in this house? <laughs> But so the thing is, I want to give these away to anyone who's just started a new relationship because, first of all, you don't want a baby that's called Corona nine months down the track. Yeah, um, <laughs> coronials. <laughs> no, and, and you know what? You know, and, and until we actually get tested and all that sort of stuff, it's better to just stay safe if you're sharing sacred space with someone. Um, and so I just want to give these away. And I align myself with this company because I discovered them because they're a vegan brand they're um, uh, an empowerment group for women which is amazing and women love carrying their monthly um, you know things in little tin boxes but these guys did too and when I opened it up it was really cute it actually had affirmations in there to remind you of your worth I'm like know your worth Oh, it's just, it was just amazing. So for me, it's all about removing stigma around women taking control, understanding their worth. And so this whole movement, if you like, of empowerment for women and for men is just smacking me awake. You know, they call it we're now awoke. And um, on so many levels, let's use this time in lockdown and isolation where you have to really draw from within and, and find your own inner strength and power as a good thing. Some people call this the silver lining. Um, there are so many different ways to describe this, but this is called real connection. And look at this as not this is happening to you, but it's happening for you. Yeah, I love that perspective. And, and what a what an interesting and, and possibly awkward situation for the postman. But... You know, what a great, what a great thing. And, and also like promoting that, you know, we've got to stay safe. If you are being exclusive and active, sexually active with someone, be safe. And, and also like there, there was another thing, I've got a lot of um, friends that are coaches and I see them online. And, and one topic that came up was if someone's, if you're, you know, trying to, or being online and you're going to meet up with people now, like you said, you've got to stay safe. If you're, you're putting both people's health at risk, um, yeah, and I hope now you're more worried about all viruses, not just this virus, <laughs> because I've been banging on about this before COVID happened. <laughs> and, you know, you should be worried about all viruses. If you're worried about this one, why not worry about that? It's something so simple. But, like, first of all, I want to tell you something. Also, don't judge yourself if how you were, you know, a year ago or whatever is so different to now, because we go through learning and, and we got a lot out of that and it's just a different time now. Um, and I think even now when you're choosing a partner, some people for their own self-survival want to actually choose someone to help them feel connected, to help them feel like it's getting them through this, you know, lockdown phase. Just make sure that you're having conversations with each other about what this is for you as well, that, you know, I don't really want to be with anyone. I'm just like looking for some company, all that sort of stuff. Know the WHO guidelines, the World Health Organization guidelines are saying basically this is just purely an online relationship. You will not from this point on be able to meet with someone IRL. As a health coach, it's my job to tell you these things as well um but then having said that be open 
to possibilities and once again not knowing what the future holds. I mean, people all the time, Carlo, are saying, you know, in these uncertain times, but life has always been uncertain. You see, nothing has really changed. It's just an exacerbation now of what's going on. So be open to the fact that you might go into an online relationship saying this is all this is, but you might pleasantly surprise yourself and fall in love and vice versa. You might kind of want to fall in love, but then allow yourself to go slow and get to know that person and go, well, maybe this isn't really the one for me either. So to be honest with you, in a nutshell, nothing has changed. Just the rules now are even more listened to, if you like. Yeah, but it gives people a chance, like you're saying, to go and connect with someone as long as there's, you know, what's one of the, the key things to connection is communication. As long as you're communicating clearly what you you want and expect. And I think for me for so long, it was like, I didn't know. Um, subconsciously I did, but consciously it was like, I don't know. And that was what was getting out there. And, and what you think, what you focus on, you're going to attract is people that I don't know either. So even for now, like if you are, I, I think for if people out there that if you are finding um, if you have found someone and you want to work on that connection, man, this is, this is such a, for me, this has been my norm for, for so long where I couldn't actually meet up with people. I remember, um, even over the past few years of either traveling or yep. being at home. And like I said, like I, I just didn't have the, let's go out for drinks. Let's do that. I had so much business work to do that. I kept home, but I built so many strong relationships and not sexual, but even friendship just virtually. And then when we did meet a month, two months, six months later, or who knows how long this is going to last, those connections are going to be so strong and so deep. Yep. And you know what? The wheel always turns, mm -hmm. you know, um, during COVID now I have, people that I've connected with before or dated before that are all coming back again and having, you know, time to think about sort of what had happened and what's really important and what matters now. Those things are what's coming up. And you were talking about one of the key things in a great relationship is communication. And the majority of that part is in the listening. Yeah. So um, we need to listen to each other more and the listening, 50% of the, the healing is in the listening. Um, which is just a huge life skill to have in any relationship, even, you know, business, anything. Yeah. Um, so it's a great skill. And um, I think that um, it's really special that you have connected with someone now and um, I celebrated you for that. Um, yesterday I was like, congratulations. I know it's a very exciting time for you and it's really sweet and special. And, um, you know, we never know what the future holds and that's also okay. But as long as, you know, we enjoy each moment and make each moment count, we say these phrases all the time, but see how much more meaning they have now. <laughs> it's, it's because healing is experiential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to go through the experiences. I can tell you, tell you, tell you, but then we all have our own timings, which we want to heal too. And they come to us when our souls are ready as well. So that's why I'm also saying sort of, be kind on yourself, be patient. You know, the swipe life was so fast. Everything was so fast. And now we just need to slow down everything. And I think just breathe, you know? <laughs> I agree. Would you say you're living your purpose? Yeah, every day in every way. And um, I think that one of the most powerful things you can do is to know your calling. We only really come alive when... Uh, we know who we are and what we have to offer the world and then live that out. And so that's one of the things that I do as a wellness coach is to give someone the courage to figure that out and understand what it is they can offer the world based on really acknowledging who it is they've always meant to be. Um, and, you know, and that's why I began with that story about me being a storyteller. I think that it's just, I must have always been meant to be that. So I'm definitely living out my purpose. And a lot of people have said to me, give it up, do a real job, do, you know, whatever. But then I've also had equal amounts of people come to me in huge energy saying, oh, I love what you do. What course did you do, do to do this job? And, and there's no course. And once again, there's no one size fits all formula that's going to work. And this is why health care or wellness and what I teach is such an individualistic approach. So to help someone find their calling and live their higher purpose is when you're really living and uh, i think at the end of the day though it all comes down to one thing love serve nurture that phrase if you don't think that that's what we're here for 
then that's the only thing I'm going to disagree with you about because we're all just here to love, serve, nurture. You know, time is all we have. Love is all that's real. And those are the things that really matter to me. So I'm definitely living my calling and um, I will continue to write, educate, inspire through entertainment um, because we only learn when we're having fun. So that's also important. And um, yeah, what about you? Are you living out your calling? Oh, you just turned into an interview on me. A hundred percent. I think right now my purpose um, or my dharma right now is to serve in, in the way that feels most fulfilling for me. And through podcasts, through mentoring, through groups, through um, free content, through entertainment as well, um, <laughs> through some yeah, funny videos. Dancing. Yes. That's just Carlo normally, but we just got it on film. So... <laughs> fun i loved it yeah i love the creativity you were like i'm not going that way i'm going that way (laughs) (laughs) look there was a controversial one with other things written on the chairs but i thought i'd keep it very uh i don't want to get my account deleted um (laughs) we could could do one on dating as well I see where you're headed though, yeah. Things to avoid. <laughs> yeah. But I think, yeah, for me right now, it's like my purpose has always been evolving and changing as I do, as our, as my interests do. But right now I feel so connected, so aligned to what I feel is what I'm here to do. And um, there's so many different avenues on where that can go to. Um, am, am I doing one thing in niching? No, I'm saying yes to everything because, again, I'm doing cooking stuff. I'm doing coffee with Carlo. I'm doing YouTube videos, dancing for some reason could turn into TikToks. Um, so many different things, but I, I love it. I'm enjoying it. And that's like you said, like the, if we're not having fun, then we're, we're not going to enjoy whether we're doing something we like, or we don't like. It's so doing, doing what makes our soul happy, but mm-hmm. you know, turning it into a profession, let's just talk about business here. You know, people buy, um, I'm on 10%, but we can keep going. <laughs> oh, Wow. People, okay, let's talk about business because people only buy from people who are passionate and living out their purpose. They don't want to be sold and they, they love certainty. And the thing is that if you have certainty about what it is you do, then there becomes a level of trust because why there's trust is it means that because you love it so much, you won't give up on it. Yep. And entrepreneurs talk about this all the time. Don't do something for the money. I say do it for the love because when it gets tough and it will always get tough, no matter what the business is, you will never give up on it. And that's why people buy from people who are living out their calling and acting from passion because they know you will not give up on it or them. Um, The other thing is too, we talked about courage, the courage to connect or the courage to live out on your calling. And I'm a lover of language as a writer. So I wanted to talk about how the word courage actually came about. It's a derivative from the French word le coeur, which means the heart. And so when you have courage, you're actually acting from the heart. So you can't go wrong when you're acting with courage. And remember, it's not about being brave or strong or anything. The true essence of the word is being heart-centered. Mm. I've got four really like I want to get them done in these this 10% that we've got left but I do want to question that and say how can we or what can we do to get more heart-centered are there things we can do daily to connect back in so many things this is what I teach (laughs) and once again it is an individualistic approach so I couldn't really just give you a generic description because I would really want to have a look at that whole person and let them also tell me what makes them tick. Remember a time where they were feeling their greatest and recall on that. And really, as I said, the, the healing is in the listening too and allowing them to hear their own language and me to relay it back. So I guess as a wellness coach, we're kind of like counsellors, if you like, and trained to hear and ask the right questions. And So it, I can't really give you just a generic answer about that, but I'm certainly trained in being able to help people to do that really well. Amazing. So there is, there is a way, but you, you ha- it's very individual and it, it's not a, a one size fits all. For okay. If I had to give you like two top things that I do that, okay. So let's just do this then. The, the two top things you must do if you really want true connection is to avoid drugs, medication, and any kind of like disconnectors, unless it's an emergency, you know? So I don't ascribe to, you know, taking a Panadol for, Um, a headache people say oh it's just a normal headache no it's not headaches aren't normal 
You never addressed the cause of why that headache was there in the first place. And just have a think about the conditioning from, you know, that we have been brought up to believe that this headache was a normal headache and this outside, you know, was a headache the lack of an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory in the body? No. So it's just a disconnect and um, it doesn't address the cause. So, um, yes, whilst medication can be, um, once again, it's a quick fix, it's a temporary thing, but it's not something that we should be reliant on for the rest of our lives. So to be really connected, you need to not have medication unless it's an emergency because medication blocks micronutrition absorption. So that's the gut, you know, so and the guts, there's a mind-gut uh, connection that people talk about. And it also disturbs the nerve system because it's a toxin and it blocks pineal glands. And so you're less connected to source or God or, you know, your nerve system's just under stress. So you're not um, perceiving the world in the way that you're designed to because there's a distorted signal now from brain to body, which is kind of what the medication is for. But then if you think about what it's for, it's kind of negating what your body's asking you to do is to get connected because the symptom is a sign to do something. So that's the first thing. You know, and I've never taken drugs in my life and I don't take medication unless it's emergency. There's a natural thing for everything. Um, and so um, the other thing I want to share with you is I'm a big chiropractic advocate and having chiropractic care actually connects you with brain to body so much more. And that's because chiropractors are a five year um, double science degree at university. Um, they're trained in detecting and removing um, vertebral subluxations. And those are the things that create that distorted signal from brain to body. So that gives me a heightened awareness of what's going on inside my body and then how I need to act um, and work with it instead of against it, if that makes sense. And, I, and I'll give you just a quick um, example. Uh, when we have a fever, for example, beautiful innate intelligence uh, workings of the body where the body needs to have a fever. Of course, we need to monitor it safely, but the reason why the body raises its temperature is to kill off the virus. So it's an innate intelligence thing in which the body is doing. And so instead of working against it and going, oh my God, I've got a fever, Yes, manage it carefully, keep an eye on it, but also work with it because straight after you've broken that sweat, we actually feel better the next day. Mm -hmm. I love that. What is the worst thing that has ever happened to you and how is that the best thing that has ever happened oh, to you? God, so many things. So, you know what? Sometimes when these things have happened for me, because now I've realised it's... it's I've been on my knees many times, like literally, and it's something that I haven't spoken about publicly yet, yet. But, and then my voice goes dry again, because when it's heavy, um, it's hard to share, but all people who have overcome really big things in their life, you see it all as a gift. So when I have been on my knees, and I'm not religious, but I literally changed my physiology and changed my chemistry and looked up and went, oh, I get it now. It is a blessing. It is a lesson. And if I can learn this lesson, I will be able to, this is my calling, I will be able to inspire more, lead more, act from the heart-centered space that we're talking, if I sit in the trust, in the heart of it, instead of acting out of fear. And this is what I want to share with everybody now is that in the state of uncertainty and hearing all of the stuff, it's easy to go into flight or fight posture where there's less blood in the brain and it's all ready to run away from the lion or wrestle it to the ground. And it's literally in our muscles with all this adrenaline. But if we open up our heart and change our physiology and breathe better and connect with our bodies, we can make clearer and more conscious decisions that are heart-centred and that's really important to do if you want to stay well. I love that. Um, and, and so many good tips in there. Like, again, it's connecting back in within to then see, well, to be less stressful and, and un during uncertain times, but then also so that you can see the blessing in everything. It's not to say that things don't happen that are bad. It's to just come from a place of acceptance, gratitude, and what can I take from this? And, and the question is, is how can I get better than this? Not how can I get worse? And a friend of mine who's a coach in America, he said to me, have you heard of the word amor fati, Andy? And I said, no. And he said, it actually means, I think it's a Latin word or Spanish or something. And he says to me, lover of one's fate. 
And so you said acceptance. I used to use the word acceptance, surrender. And when he said this to me, he's like, you don't just accept it, but you actually love it. You love your fate. And we have to trust or have faith in the fact that this happened for a reason. Why did it happen for a reason? Because it happened. And so we need to love that and then work with the gifts, work with it. You can't control it, you can't change it, but you can respond to it in a way that makes you feel empowered and well and do something and flip it and turn it into a gift, if you like. I love that. And it's all perspective of this is, it's all been a part of your journey to make you who you are. Now use that and share that. How are we going for- The perfect example is Nelson Mandela. He went to jail for 27 years Robins are in the worst conditions. And he said that that was a holiday from his inner self. And even though he was so, like, the way he was treated was disgusting, when he came out, he still led a nation and changed a race forever. So what do you do with the gift of the pain? What was your other question? Sorry. I was going to say your, your pain is your power. Um, how are we going for battery? Just let's keep going, but probably one more question. <laughs> yeah, I've got two. I've got two. What is the best advice you've ever been given? Um, probably the Thomas Edison quote, being in wellness, I'm so passionate about understanding how we should care for ourselves. And Thomas Edison said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine. He will rather educate his patients in nutrition in the care of the human frame and in the cause and prevention of disease. And so I leave you with this because I want you to understand, like address the cause, not just, you know, the symptom and the care of the human frame smacks to me of like, what are we doing with, with, our, with our physiology? Because our spine is our lifeline through the nerve system. You perceive the world, adapt to stress and coordinate every single cell, tissue and organ in the body. So yeah, that's my favorite quote that was ever told to me. And I, just I live by it because oh by the way doctors are teachers if you have to actually look up that word doctors are educators or they should be and and somehow you know we became to in this quick fix society again it's like oh just give me write me the script give me the pill um and we didn't want to know and it's important to be educators again yeah mm -hmm. what advice would you give your 16 year old self oh gosh that was a really hard time for me um you're safe. Yeah. So much stuff happened uh, when I was 16. Uh, a lot of trauma. I also witnessed a lot of trauma and I felt very alone. And um, it's a hard time being a teenager because you've got hormones changing and all that sort of thing. And so um, I think it's important to know um, that even if you never feel safe in a scenario, trust that because this is just quantum physics there's got to be light and dark there's good and bad there's kind there's mean and everything you know you can't have one without the other you just have to look for it so you know if, if you're feeling lost or alone or whatever there will be from the equi equilibrium that naturally wants to occur with quantum physics it's there you just have to look for it in anything that you need yeah mm. what does it mean to be conscious final question um connected and aware connect to your body um, and there are disconnectors as i talked about you know drugs medication you know um, getting wasted with alcohol um, addictions um, and just even just not wanting to acknowledge trauma and doing the deep work to heal so being conscious um, needs to be coupled with feeling connected so that you can make those conscious connected choices yeah I love that so much. Where can people connect with you, buy your book, get all your information and see all your amazing value on quarantating, but also all the other things. You know what? I do want you to follow me on Instagram because I actually respond to every single message. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and I, and I really enjoy connecting with real people on the grassroots level. So A-N-D-I dot L-E-W. Also my website, andylou.com. Um, you know, I'll, my, my book's half price at the moment. I'm going to throw in one of those uh, moments gifts as well. And of course, wellness coaching with me, um, information about there. I'm actually doing a pay what you can scenario on wellness coaching because my gift to the earth 
um, you know, is to pay it forward. I'm so privy to having had the best healers and, and all that sort of thing. And I have so much great knowledge, but I want to be able to share it with, it's no point in me. Well, how can I be happy if somebody else is sad? So I want the community to be well at large too. So whatever you can afford, I'm going to wellness coach with you during this COVID lockdown time. I love that. You have such an amazing energy about you. And I love how you, um, share that with everyone and like like you're doing right now you're so giving and and so caring not only to yourself but other people and and what you've shared today was uh, amazing i'm so grateful for the time we've spent together connected virtually um and there's so many gold nuggets in this conversation so from me to you thank you so much um i cannot wait to connect in person one day soon but also uh collaborate on future things because there's just so much that align here um but thank you so much and I hope you have Thank a you, Carlos. Quarantine. Big hug to you <laughs> and a real one when this is all over. <laughs> Done. Love it. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Bye.